It's day three at GDC 2022, and the coverage continues with more developer interviews and breaking VR news. Today, we're catching up with the developers of Cosmonious High, Altair Breaker, Snapdragon, and the upcoming Lynx Mixed Reality headset. Welcome to Cosmonious High. We're thrilled to have our newest Prismi student with us. As the chaos grows around campus, you'll need to adapt some pretty nifty powers in order to save the school. Hello everyone, Alex VR here from Between Realities for UploadVR.com at GDC 2022 in San Francisco. And I am joined alongside Andrew Ike, COL and Cable Slinger at Alchemy Labs. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing really well. It's surviving. <laughs> so, Alchemy Labs... Hit titles in the past, right? Job Simulator, Vacation Simulator. How have you built on what you learned making those games? And what, how have you applied that to your approach here in Cosmonious High? Yeah, so we, we have a foundation that we always bring between the games. So Job Simulator was very much about, you know, you kind of had the one singular place that you were in, but it was about, like, interacting with these objects. And then Vacation Simulator was like, okay, let's have you start to move around. Let's see what happens when you build a bigger world. And then Cosmonious High is the biggest world we built. So And it's a school. And we dug really deep into character and interaction and taking the, the kind of, you know, different small scale things you were doing and just pushing that even further. So you get to, you know, manipulate all these objects, but then you get to do it around a, bu a cool cast with uh, re these really fun students and teachers. And on top of that, you have the powers that adds a whole new dimension to this. Nice. So who do you guys think this game is for? Like who's the target audience? I think the target audience is, you know, people who've played a bit of VR, right? They, they've played Job Simulator, they've played Beat Saber, right? And then what they're looking for is something that, is a world that they can really sink their teeth into, right? And maybe not a place where you're going to have to fight all the time, but a place where you can really, like, be yourself and figure, you know, kind of out and be with these characters and not worry about, I don't know, a giant sword slashing you in half or something like that. So when can we play the game? Uh, you can play it on the 31st of March. March 31st, Cosmonious High. Thank you so much, Andrew, from Alchemy Labs. It's been a pleasure, man. I am joined here by Eduardo and Melody from Patchworld, where you are demoing your brand new VR experience. Why don't you tell us a little bit of, about what you have brought to GDC today? Right, so we're making a world builder for music. So the best way to think about it is like Walt Disney Fantasia means Minecraft, to empower new creators to express themselves into this new medium that is extended reality. So in our experience, like everyone around is talking about the music metaverse and how the metaverse is going to be this great place for creators to explore and experiment and own what they're doing. Well, in fact, we have made the, this possible. Like Patch is the f first and unique places that enable you to create really without limit by connecting blocks. And this is the only open framework that we've seen and it goes really deep so it is super playful and should enable anyone who's not a musician to enjoy you know this connection of sound and visual and gesture but then if you're a real artist and you really want to create for the medium you can do it so there's this is a pretty unique looking experience here it's kind of atmospheric kind of alien in a lot of way I almost felt like i was on an alien planet at the bottom of the ocean playing with this really unique drum set what was your guys' approach to the art direction of this game and how did you make some of these decisions actually that's what i wanted to say when you spoke about artistic direction i think it's because you only try one of the world and in fact we're not about having a style in the game because everything about our game or our experience is to be anything anyone can imagine so you can import your own assets and really make it yours so the way we see it is is the metaverse being this playground for anyone to express themselves the way they want not the way we want them to express so you try this underwater world and it's fantastic and surreal and alien but you open another world and it has a completely different style you can really invent the, the instrument and the interface that you're dreaming about so we're all about fantasy and about everything that is not possible to do on a synthesizer, on a hardware device, or, you know, anything we can find in the real world. When can we expect Patchworld Sound of the Metaverse to be available for players, and what platforms are we looking at? Uh, it will be released this year, after the summer, and we're targeting the Oculus Quest and Steam, and so it will be coming first on virtual reality, or we're looking into other platforms after release. Mm -hmm.
and I am joined alongside Hugo Swart, VP and GM of XR at Snapdragon. How are you, Hugo? Doing great. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Nice to have you uh, see our demos. What have you brought with you to GDC this year? So um, last uh, November, we announced a new developer platform called Snapdragon Spaces. So essentially, uh, we provide our technology APIs directly to developers. And uh, now um, we announced a, a fund to attract these developers to build, start building on, um, on Spaces. So here uh, we have um, a Lenovo headset plugged into a smartphone and uh, showing you know, to the world the first uh, set of apps uh, available. And I've also heard about another exciting announcement that you guys have been able to share with everyone recently. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. And the big announcement we had was uh, Square Enix, uh, who um, is uh, working with us on their next uh, generation uh, games using Snapdragon Spaces. Wow, so we're talking Square Enix plus AR applications? That's, uh, you know, Snapdragon Spaces is all about um, AR. So um, as uh, we work together with the community, I mean, you start seeing, you know, big brands wanting to also participate, also build applications, uh, you know, the bridge, uh, the physical, and the, uh, re uh, and the virtual worlds. Yeah. And now it's us reaching out to the developer community. So now it's uh, beyond uh, interfacing with our hardware customers, now having the developer as a customer. And I am joined here with Nogi and Toriyama from Third Verse and the developers of Altair Breaker. Well, tell us a little bit about Altair Breaker. What are you guys showing off today? You know, our first game called the Souls of Gargantua, is I think everybody knows. And then this is our second title for the sword fighting game. And uh, we learned a lot of stuff from Souls of Gargantua. And then we that improve the more user experience. And then especially in the future, we have a more like, you know, the superpower, the smashing stuff. Well, tell me about the approach to the combat in this game. This time, uh, we tried to make it a little more easier. Uh, um, the sort of Gargantua main concept is, was real sort of fighting, but uh, it's a too realistic. And then we find out user actually wanted another too real. He, they user wanted about like a surreal experience. Yeah. That's why we're trying to make it easier on the more superpower, the flying and the climbing kind of you know, surreal experience. That's our focus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about the multiplayer functionality of this game. Yeah. So. Our company vision is try to metaverse. So our old games are all uh, multiplayer game, and uh, you know, uh, you know, we try to make a user you know, interaction in the VR more, and then you know, the combination fight. That that's our main concept of the multiplayer. And when do you think we can expect to see the game come out? And on what headsets will it be available? So uh, we primarily targeting Meta Quest too and also PC VR. And uh, later this year, maybe next year, I don't know when, but PS VR too. That's our target. And I am joined alongside Stan LaRoque from Lynx. How are you doing, Stan? Yeah, I'm good. So this is, this is the Lynx headset. Some of you might know what it is, but this is uh, the first standalone mixed reality headset. So it can do VR, it can do AR, it can do everything in between, like you, what you, you, you tried uh, beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, it has crazy components, crazy optics, uh, a lot of sensors, but that all that enables new experiences in MR. And we're today also with Qualcomm because they, this is a standalone headset and we are featuring their latest XR2. And we are just also announced that we are going to uh, enable Snapdragon Spaces on their platform. And we're integrating with a lot of partners. We're compatible with SteamVR. We're compatible with most of the people out there in the ecosystem. We are building in the open. We are building an open platform. We're trying to bring an alternative to what's existing on market and also what's coming. So yeah, that's, that's Lynx. Tell us a little bit about the demo that you brought here today. Yeah, so we have a, a few demos running on headsets already. We're building samples for our developers. And the one you tried is really interesting. It's a small 30 seconds tech demo that shows the full capabilities of the device, like hand tracking, six DOF, you saw AR, you saw VR. Mm -hmm. So the scene is like the solar system, you think you're in VR, but and you can play with planets. There is a little bit of physics there. It's interesting. You can see the, the frame rate, the latency of the of the 
interaction and all that. And then you can step out and go in AR and now you're back in your living room or in your environment and you don't feel obstructed in your views. There is no like tunnel vision, like what's, what you can expect from other devices. So it's, um, it's a, I think it's a really compelling device because I think in 30 seconds, you could absolutely see the potential of the, you know, the games and the, the applications we're going to put on this, on this device in the next mm -hmm. few months. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never quite seen lenses like the ones that are in the Lynx headset. Is this your guys' design and, and how did this happen? So we, we worked with a Spanish company to design high-performance VR optics uh, from the start. We wanted to try something new. And uh, so they designed the geometry of the lens and we designed the optical block around it. So how you assemble that with a display, we mastered the alignment, the calibration of all that on the manufacturing side of things as well. It was a very long process, actually. It took us one year and a half to get it right. Mm -hmm. But when you tried, I think you saw a beautiful image in the end. Uh, so it's... Uh, we like to try new things. We like to, you know, we have to find different shaders compared to other products. And I think we, we place some, some crazy bets. One of, one of them is the optics. The other might be, you know, the hand tracking with Ultralip. Um, and, and fitting everything in this package was, was really the challenge, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you guys at in the development cycle of this headset? So there's the software and the hardware. So in the software, we're pretty mature. We're going to put the SDK out soon. It's going to be OpenXR runtime. And on the hardware side of things, we're in the process of manufacturing with our Taiwanese partner. And right, we were supposed to deliver in April, but we're going to face some issues with the supply chain. There is drama every week here. I'm sure you're aware with everything going on right now. So mm -hmm. I think you can expect the first headsets to come between June and July. So it's, it's a matter of weeks. We have like some weeks of, of delays here, but it's, it's now. To stay up to date with all the latest VR news, be sure to follow UploadVR.com and Between Realities. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.